Madison, and I work in the Rackham Resolution Office. Darlene, would you like to introduce yourself really quickly? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Darlene Ray Johnson, and um, my title is Rackham Resolution Officer. I actually wear a couple of different hats within Rackham, um, one being around conflict resolution and support for graduate students, but also um, disability um, um, accommodations for graduate student employees, um, as well as our academic integrity process. Fantastic. So we um, are here on the screen and on this <laughs> slide for you to just reiterate kind of who we are and our roles. Um, we have a lot of information to share with you just about the context of the office and then we welcome, you know, questions that you may have uh, at any time to be put in the chat um, or to kind of raise hand and, and unmute um, kind of as we go along. Um, before we really got started, however, we just wanted to get a sense from you about kind of what you're thinking and feeling and what you're bringing with you um, as you are thinking about kind of this uh, next year and this next phase um, of graduate school. So we have a few poll questions that I would like for folks to engage with. I'm going to share them now. So there's three questions. One is, as you think about graduate school, what are the areas you're most excited about? Meeting new people, moving to a new place, learning new things and or advancing your research. So take a moment to kind of think about that. Question number two is, as you think about graduate school, what are some areas that you're nervous about? Meeting new people, <laughs> moving to a new place, learning new things and or advancing your research. And then the last one we'd like for you to consider as well is, where would you go if you ran into a problem, either academic or personal, while in graduate school? So we'll take a couple of minutes to do that and kind of talk about and share the results um, that you have uh, submitted. So, so far about 60% of people um, have responded and things are kind of Spreading out a little bit here in our percentages. I'll do probably one more minute um, to ensure that everybody has an opportunity here. About 70% of us have participated. Okay, I don't see any kind of new additions. So I'll end the poll and then just uh, share the results with you. So question number one, um, as you're thinking about graduate school, what are you excited about? And it seems like this is a, a great group of learners. You're excited to be engaging, learning new things, probably evidenced by coming to the session <laughs> and attending today, wanting to just understand and kind of gain information, which is wonderful. Um, and then thinking about what you might be nervous um, about, a, a pretty nice spread here, but more research focus as well around how might I advance my research? What are some things I, you know, want to be mindful of as I conduct my research? Maybe I'm, you know, going into a new field from, you know, undergraduate or, a, you know, a previous graduate degree, some of those things, um, which I think is, you know, certainly reasonable. And then where would you go if you ran into a problem, academic or personal? Uh, we offer each of these answers so that you know that each of these are definitely opportunities and uh, spaces you could go to get some of your questions answered. So a lot of folks mentioned their advisor, which is fantastic, uh, department chair or other program staff. You might rely on family and friends for other supports, um, depending on kind of the nature of your, your worry or your concern and then campus resources. So again, we really appreciate you being able to share this with us. We offer this as a way to say graduate school is full of lots of things, lots of excitement, potentially lots of challenges. Um, and so knowing just kind of where you can go and who you can turn to um, is the hope of being able to share with you a little bit more about the resolution office. So what do you, we do, the resolution office. Uh, we work with students to provide a neutral and safe environment to talk. Really, I tell people that my role is really as a listener um, in the resolution office to just understand a concern or an issue that you as a student might have. Again, whether kind of personal um, or related, you know, more specifically to your, your graduate work. 
um, listening to the concerns and complaints that you might have as a result of, you know, an issue in the program or with your advisor or just something that has come up. Um, in your experience, we work a lot to refer individuals to different campus resources. So we always tell people, if you're not sure where to go, know that you can go to the resolution office to help offer insight and maybe more information about the types of uh, appropriate campus resources that there may be. The university has so much to offer um, to students. And so really knowing that um, there, there can be a place, um, you know, can offer some um, security, you know, and confidence for you, you know, related to the issue. Uh, we do work to kind of mediate conflicts or address um, communication issues, progress issues, et cetera, that, that may come up as well. Um, and then working to advocate for a fair process to ensure that students are feeling like they are getting kind of the best for themselves in relation to kind of policy um, and progress. Um, this is kind of our website um, page. I'll grab our actual um, link and put it into the chat for folks in just a second. But we wanted to let you know that you can, of course, reach out to Dar Darlene and I individually with our email addresses. And you can also go to the Rackham Resolution website. You can request a meeting here under the Meet With Us box. Let us know kind of a time that would work best for you, the nature of your concern. Um, and then we will follow back up with you to schedule a time um, to meet. We really want to direct you to this kind of now, first and foremost, so that you're aware if and when something comes up into the future, you would know, you know where to go to request a meeting and how to reach out to us. Um, in addition to meeting with students, we also offer some proactive programming and workshops related to conflict resolution and communication. And if you have ideas or thoughts around content that you'd like to see related to that or skills that you're hoping to kind of gain, uh, we welcome your input and have a space on our website as well for you to share a little bit more about maybe what you're hoping to see or what you would um, like to see that maybe you've experienced um, in other spaces in the past. So um, a number of students that we meet with, and we meet with, <laughs> I can't tell you how many students, um, they always ask, so under what kinds of circumstances should we reach out to you? And, um, and so we wanted to share with you, here are some options. You're not limited to these options, um, but here's just a couple of um, examples of, of reasons why you might contact us. So if you have a problem or conflict that's involving the broader university um, and you don't know where to go, as Mallory indicated, you can always come to our office and talk with Mallory or myself. And um, if we don't have the answer, we will help you locate the answer or the correct offer. Um, if you feel your concerns are not being heard, so you've gone to several different individuals, you've not gotten a satisfactory resolution, um, you can certainly come to us and we will help advocate for you and um, to find a, a solution that works for you. If you need information about policies and procedures that are affecting you, um, I was saying just this morning that we have Rackham policy, you have your program policy, you may have your school college policy. So there's lots of policies um, that you have to adhere to. Um, the expectation is that you know those policies, but certainly, um, you know, if you do not and you're impacted or affected by one, um, you know, it's a very good um, practice to be familiar with, with your policies. But if you're not quite sure, like, how this policy applies to you, or you believe that the policy as written wasn't applied to you fairly, um, you can certainly come to us and we can assist with that. If you need help to resolve or mediate a dispute um, with a faculty member or administrative staff. So we typically do not become involved in student to student conflict. We have another office on campus that can assist with that. But if you're having difficulty with say your mentor or your um, faculty advisor, research advisor, um, lab manager or something like that. So a faculty or staff member um, and you need assistance in um, getting that issue resolved. Um, certainly mediation is one um, tool that we use to help resolve issues, but there are lots um, in our tool belt. Um, and um, we certainly talk with you, try to understand what the issues are. Um, we empower you to be very actively involved in the decision about um, how to proceed with, with um, 
your matter or your case. Um, so, but please reach out to us and we can assist. And if you believe your rights have been violated or have not been followed. So, um, so we also wanted to provide just a couple of examples of cases that students have brought to us. Um, because it's amazing, you know, students will say, I, you know, I never thought about taking this particular issue to an office. Um, and we see just about everything. We see the gamut in terms of student, both personal and academic issues. So, so I guess I will I want to go on the record to say there's not an issue <laughs> too big or too small um, that we can help um, resolve. But for example, um, you have a relationship issue um, related to your advisor or your PI. Um, and so let's say you're not getting feedback, you know, despite efforts to, to receive feedback, um, or you're getting too much feedback and you're actually feeling quite smothered by your advisor or mentor. Um, um, another issue is certainly um, just not having clear expectations from, from your mentor um, in terms of you know, how to progress in your program or what's needed in your paper or your thesis or your dissertation. And so um, you know, if you run into those kinds of issues, please come see us. Um, it's not that we can um, sort of dictate to your program around these issues, but sometimes it's about having a conversation and we can help sort of coach you about how to approach that conversation with you. If you have concerns about academic progress or coursework concerns. Um, so let's say something has come up. Um, you've been hospitalized and so you've had to miss several days or you had to go home unexpectedly to deal with a family emergency. Um, and that's impacting your um, academic progress. Um, or there's something going on in your, in your class and the instructor is not necessarily following what was in the syllabus um, and you have concerns about that because it has impacted you negatively, um, certainly seek us out and we can, can help um, provide just a little bit of guidance about how to approach those kinds of issues. Um, in the lab setting, um, you know, labs sometimes have three individuals, sometimes they're much, much larger, and sometimes conflicts are bound to happen. And so if you do run into um, disputes with your, your lab mates, um, and the group dynamic is just not gelling, um, and there are some issues, and you want to figure out a way, or you're interested in um, trying to address that in a proactive way, um, come to us, come to us early. Don't wait until the issue gets so large um, that it's really um, hard to manage. We would encourage you to come early if you have concerns and then we can talk about a couple of um, tactics to help um, get the relationship and the dynamic back in order. Or if you have safety or protocol concerns, um, you can certainly reach out to us. Um, we also provide assistance with um, emergency funding. Many of your programs may have emergency funding, um, but some of them will actually send students to Rackham for emergency funds. There is an application on the Rackham website. So if you run into an issue, graduate students are eligible. Let me back up. PhD students are eligible for, um, I think up to two emergency fund awards, master students are eligible for one. Um, the maximum amount per award is $2,500. And um, we really want you to access these funds if you have some kind of unforeseen, unexpected hardship that comes um, you know, some, something happened, you had your rent money, but something happened and now you no longer have it. And, you know, you'll go into arrears if you don't pay your rent. Now our, our website will, has a list of things that are eligible and things that are ineligible. And rent, I think would be listed as ineligible. But again, we would not want someone to, you know, lose their housing. Um, so, you know, if that's an issue, I think the best thing is, if you're not sure, check in with Mallory or I, uh, and we can help you. We can also help guide you in terms of um, 
applying for these funds in a way that you'll more likely um, be approved. Um, and, and then we can also streamline the process, cut down on the amount of time um, that's needed to go back and forth to get the, the appropriate information. We can help you with that upfront. And then um, if there are mental or physical health concerns, um, you know, one of the things that our office is, is charged with doing is that we can provide an academic notification to your program. You know, a lot of students don't take advantage of this and you don't have to, you know, you may be in a program where you feel very comfortable letting your program know what's going on. Um, and so then they can make allowances for it. So if you have to make up work or take up make up exam, you know, you can work that out with your program. But if you're running into difficulty getting that kind of accommodation, I would say reach out to Mallory or myself or we can assist you. So um, we talked about some of the re resources within Rackham. Um, I've shared about the, the Rackham Emergency Fund. Um, I, I would like to take this opportunity to let you know that there is also an emergency fund in the Center for the Education of Women Plus, the CEW Plus, um, and it's open to all students, not just women. Um, and they also have an emergency fund. And as I mentioned before, your, some of your programs might be able to provide some funding, but um, you know, if in doubt, please come to Rackham. And then um, I mentioned earlier, I wear a couple of different hats and one of those is to provide accommodations for graduate students with disability um, on the employment side. And I, I, I do wanna make that clear. Um, graduate students, um, GSIs, GSSAs, GSIs and GSSAs are covered by the GEO contract. And so you may have heard about that if, um, or you will, if you haven't yet, you will, because uh, that'll be pro probably part of your funding package. Um, GSRAs are not covered by the GEO contract, but they are generally covered uh, under the same provisions as the GEO contract. And one of the provisions of that contract is that graduate student employees has a right to um, employment accommodations and they tried to streamline that process. And so my office is the designated central office for graduate student employees seeking a disability accommodation. The accommodation request form is out there on the Rackham website. You would just put in um, graduate students with disabilities in the search box and it should take you um, to that particular website. In terms of um, another really important policy for graduate students to know about, the leave of absence policy, it applies to PhD students only. Um, and there are four types of leave, um, a personal leave, which you can take one time, one semester only, uh, a medical leave, military leave, and a family dependent care leave. Um, the medical leave, so there, there's a couple of things about the medical leave. One is that um, if you are eligible for the leave of absence, the medical leave of absence, your um, health insurance is included. With it. Usually the program pays half and um, Rackham pays half. Um, if you run into difficulty with your program paying half, I, again, I would say reach out to Mallory and I um, to assist with that. Um, and the other thing about the medical leave of absence is that you will need medical documentation to substantiate that. You don't need any kind of documentation for a personal leave, but you do for a medical leave. And then the family independent care leave, I don't think there's any documentation, you know, supplemental documentation needed for that um, as well. And then the last policy is called our uh, parental accommodation policy. And so students, um, we have pretty good insurance here with grad care. And so a number of students um, come here and then they start their families. Um, this policy applies to um, students who give birth or who adopt. The policy, um, both um, the father and the mother are eligible um, for the parental accommodation period. It is not called a leave. So it's like an eight week period where you make modifications in your, um, your academic requirements 
um, to allow you to spend time to bond, um, you know, with your, your new child. So, um, and you apply for that. Um, a, a bonus to the parental accommodation policy is for students who take that parental accommodation um, uh, period, their time to degree is extended, um, you know, for a period. Uh, so it's not like you lose time, even if you take that eight week break. Um, so all of those policies are available online, um, you know, if you need to know about it. It's pretty early because you're, you're just stepping on campus. Um, and again, you may not remember necessarily that these policies exist, but we do want you to know that if you run into difficulty, there's usually some kind of um, policy um, that is available that we can help assist you. So, thanks, Ellen. So this is just a listing of the workshop offerings I had mentioned earlier um, to give you a sense of maybe what you could look for um, as you kind of enter and consider what your fall schedule might be. Um, we have offered a navigating difficult conversations, communicating, excuse me, communicating across difference, and then some different listening circle conversations, all intended to be able to provide insight, skill, and just context to you know, communication styles, conflict styles, but also kind of just hearing from you, like what's going on, what have been your experiences, what are some of the needs um, that you have that are kind of ever evolving um, as a graduate student. Um, we have offered virtual office hours in the past, um, and we'll continue to do so um, into the fall. They previously were on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and so we would just ask that as you are getting, you know, your soon-to-be weekly Rackham student newsletters, which generally come out on Fridays, um, that you just be mindful of the links and the times um, that will be shared kind of within, within those spaces. Um, or if you have questions, again, you can reach out to Darlene and I, the office intake form, or drop into office hours if it's a kind of quick question or you just wanted to engage in some, some problem solving. Mm -hmm. And that's it. We have a lot of information <laughs> I know that we covered kind of fairly quickly. There might be a lot of just questions or things that um, we could help clarify for you. Um, we did drop a, a few links into the chat. Um, and so I just welcome any thoughts, questions, things that perhaps you were hoping to hear, you know, but didn't um, as we offered this overview for you of the services within the resolution office. I'll just stop my share so that I can see you. So we have a question, are PhD students um, kind of GSRAs from the start? Um, it probably depends on your program in terms of what that designation will look like. Um, some students could start out, you know, that could be their, their first funding um, opportunity is through a GSRA, so working in the lab. Um, again, others are the GS, um, I, where you're teaching, um, you're doing some level of teaching um, in the classroom. But I would say, you know, if you, if you're not, if you don't know what your funding package is at this point, please check your program. Um, so you'll know that. Hmm. Other questions? welcome. We were just so comprehensive, Darlene, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly a lot to take in and we didn't want to, um, you know, lead you by saying there may be conflict, um, you know, here are these resources. But again, I think as proactive as possible as you can be as a student and gathering resources, you know, making contacts, getting your questions answered. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the better, certainly at, at this initial stage um, for you. Yeah, I mean, I've encountered fifth year students who said, oh my God, I wish I had found you earlier, right? And, um, and so we think it's helpful just to let you know that, that we're here. Again, as Mallory indicated, you may not remember sort of all of the services and resources that we offer, but if something comes up, and you know, you're not sure where to go or you're not sure how to manage it, you can say, ah, Darlene and Mallory said to come to them for just about anything. So 
That's all you have to remember. <laughs> um, I think, oh, great. We got a question about just a link to read more about resources. And Paul mentioned lots in the grad school um, 101 in Canvas. Just, I would say generally the Rackham site itself, rackham.umich.edu has information about additional services, you know, fields of study, finances, um, and then also um, kind of like information linked from the broader kind of campus maze and blueprint about returning to campus, kind of covert precautions, all of those things. So we've tried to condense as much as possible and then have information take in different spaces so that you can uh, know kind of where to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, again, I mean, I'm totally plugging the Grad School 101 portal, but um, <laughs> so I'm that guy. But uh, yes, there are resources there, and, and we're always trying to update and add announcements and, and, and the like. But also, um, if nothing else, the submit a question form, we check that daily uh, in Grad School 101. If you just have a question and don't know where the link is, just go to the portal, hit submit a question, fill in the form, and we'll get back to you. Uh, to direct you to whatever resource or resources you need. So that's something new we're kind of trying this year. And so we, we encourage you to use it, if, especially if you don't know where to go, start by asking a question if you can't find it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just one more thing I'd like to say about the um, the rack and policies that I shared. Um, you know, so there's the process I think is straightforward. Usually you go online, you complete, you know, the the application, but um, a lot of times students aren't, what they aren't clear about is the implications. So for example, if you decided you wanted to take um, a leave of absence the semester before your qualifying exam. Um, and so students may reach out to Mallory and I to, you know, to talk about that. So what do I need to think about? What kinds of questions should I be asking? Um, and so we can help with that piece more around the implications. Um, again, I, I think the policies are, are pretty straightforward, but you know, what impact might that have on your standing or status in the program um, you know, by taking advantage of one or, or another of these policies? Okay, so a question about the COVID-19 emergency fund. So I can share from kind of the Rackham perspective um, is that we have kind of expanded eligibility criteria under our emergency funding process to kind of take into consideration just the impacts um, and the kind of dynamic circumstances that may have been a part of your experience kind of in, in the pandemic. Um, so that would be again for like your access as a student upon um, kind of courses beginning. So next week, um, if there were then presenting factors related to COVID-19. So some students who kind of have been active have previously sought out funds for, um, you know, some travel expenses, moving expenses, returning from field research, um, kind of other just dynamics with living expenses, rent, conflict with roommates, who might not have been as attentive to, you know, public health guidance, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of within the, the Rackham scope. I do know that um, my sense is this additional emergency fund that you might be referring to comes from the Office of Financial Aid. Um, and I believe there should be like a tab within your Canvas account that has information about that. Um, my sense is it's a pretty straightforward application and that they're kind of doing those on a rolling basis um, within the next couple of weeks. And so I would direct some more specific questions about that to OFA or go to the site to just double check that. But that is an additional kind of COVID specific uh, emergency fund that is uh, has been made available. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Other things that either what we've talked about or what other folks have asked questions about have made you curious of or thank you paul the michigan acronyms <laughs> office of financial aid <laughs> uh, some of you mentioned um in the poll that you would you know seek out your department resources or family and friends um you know if you needed um assistance and so i just wanted to share with you that um you know in all of your programs they they may have an equivalent of a student services area to assist students um, and you're certainly welcome to utilize those resources 
So you may go your entire, you know, um, three to five years here and never meet Mallory and I, and that would certainly be okay. But our office is also available for students. If, if, if sometimes it's a very personal issue, and we've had students say, I, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable sharing this information with anyone in my program, you know. So I'm glad that you're available. And um, as Mallory indicated, you know, our our conversations are private. We don't share in, any information with anyone without getting your permission first. So. So again, you know, it's just another resource. You know, your advisor uh, will know some things most likely related to your degree. <laughs> um, and then there's a, another position in your program called a grad coordinator who does all the administrative related work within your program. They're an excellent resource. Um, and, then, and then we are available as well. I'm just going to um, also add to the chat um, information about our kind of counseling center and services. So it's called CAPS, Counseling and Psychological Services. Um, Rackham itself has an embedded counselor who works specifically with graduate students. And so while Darlene and I can be helpful in, you know, problem solving, consulting, you know, resource referral policy kind of related things, uh, we're certainly not clinicians in the way that, you know, a therapist or another kind of uh, provider may be. And so a lot of students um, that have come to talk with us about, you know, some logistical things also have found CAPS to be beneficial for some of the maybe more personal issues um, that they are experiencing. Um, and so Rackham, as I said, does have an embedded counselor as do many other programs. And so it may be that your program has a counselor that you would want to have a much more kind of confidential conversation with about concerns um, than like a Darlene mentioned program staff or even she and I. Um, so that's just something for you to consider there as well. And then we had one additional question about explaining more about leaves um, for PhD students. Um, so I don't know, Darlene, if you want to pick back up <laughs> from the presentation. Yeah, I'd be happy to. So, uh, you know, as I indicated, there are four. Um, there's a medical leave of absence. Um, and I think you can take up to four consecutive um, semesters of leave. Um, and you need medical documentation and health insurance is um, usually provided along with a medical leave. There's a personal leave um, that you can take one time for any reason, um, but you only get to take it once. Um, there's family and dependent care um, and military leave. So those are the four types of leave for our PhD students. If you're a master's student, um, we have something called detached study, um, and you work with your program um, if you're interested in that. And you can um, go on detached study for up to 12 months um, without having to um, reapply for admission to the program. So, so thank you for asking that question because it prompted me to, to share with you about the, the master's kind of equivalent, but there is not a leave, a formal leave for master's students. Okay. Okay. We'll kind of let you consider, let it simmer a little bit more if there are any other um, questions. I think we've offered many links, things for you to kind of Pull from the chat point two and certainly revisit with um, um, the 101 kind of information within uh, the tab. So, Paul, is there anything on your end that you would like to emphasize or connect with the group about? Thanks, Mallory. Just to uh, fill out today's evaluation, uh, keep going to the Grad School 101 portal. If you're not in the portal or maybe you didn't get our initial email about it or whatever, just I'll be around afterwards. Let me know. We'll make sure that you're in it. Um, and um, Thank you. Well, we'll, I'm going to turn off the recording here in a second, and then we can stick around if you want to ask one on one questions, either by opening up your camera mic or just keep going in the chat. We'll be around. Um, but thank you, um, everyone, for coming. Thanks for a lot of you for coming to these Rackham, Rackham 101, uh, sorry, Grad School 101 workshops um, over the last couple of weeks. We're going to continue to do them into the fall. Our next one, well, next week we have our information fair. So you get, if you haven't heard or seen the information about that, 
in the many emails we've sent out. Uh, that's next Thursday, the 26th from 11 to 1 p.m. It's more of a drop in, drop in and then converse with over 70 different organizations on our campus, see what involvement looks like, see what some of these different offices on campus can do for you. So if you have a specific question, um, you know, you can hang with them for a few minutes and ask them questions. And of course, we have our virtual fall welcome next Friday. And then in terms of a program workshop, September 1st, for those that are interested in taxes and how to file your taxes as a graduate student, um, specifically more catered towards domestic students, um, September 1st is our tax workshop. You can sign up for that in the Grad School 101 portal. You'll also be getting a direct email invite to that as well. Um, it's a very thorough workshop, but I think it is one that's very uh, beneficial for graduate students as they're starting their career here at Michigan. And even for some that have been here for a couple of years, people always pick up some new information. And for those that are going to be filing quarterly, um, the first deadline is September 15th. So September 1st is really gives you a couple of weeks to sort of get in there and, and see uh, what you need to do. So with that, thank you, Mallory. Thank you, Darlene. And uh, thanks everyone for coming for Grad School 101. We will stick around in the room and recordings of this will be probably made available in the next week or two. You will get a message when recordings uh, are up in the portal. Um, so enjoy your afternoon, everyone. <laughs> thank you.